G'day. Today we are going to replace a laser unit inside the CD drive of a Sega Mega CD Series 1. All the details are in the description below. There's the unit there. So let's kick it off. Step 1 is to pry open the CD tray. So if you've got something thin like a scrounger or flathead screwdriver or even the edge of a credit card just uh, slide it in here on the right edge and there's a, a gear there that needs to be slightly nudged and you'll get the CD tray open like so and that's the gear there um, that we're actually pushing so it gives you a bit better idea of what it looks like you just sort of push at it at an angle like that and it will then let you open the tray. Next up we'll just remove these two screws which hold the top portion of the CD drive in. Uh, this part holds the CD in place in the drive. So we'll just put that to the side and we'll just flip the unit over and remove the screws holding the PCB on. There are normally four here but this unit came with two. Alrighty, with those screws removed, we just need to lift the PCB gently. It's actually attached to the sub PCB board with four prongs, and you just they just slide out. So you can see they go in there. It's a connector of sorts. Now make sure to lift it gently because the unit is still attached with a bunch of wires. You can see the wires on either side there. There's actually three, one either side of the board and then one on the back. So we'll just get your nails in there and wiggle it out. That's one down. And we'll just flip the drive over and do the same to the other side. That one came out a bit easier, which is always good. It's always just good to lift from both sides. And if you do have a bit of a struggle or if it's a bit hard to lift one out, you can always just use a scrounger or something to lift one edge to get your nail underneath. I'm going to do that here because this looks pretty snug in that connector. So let's just lift it slightly. And hopefully that, yep, so we've got one end out, and there we go. And that's the PCB out. So next up, step four, is the rail guide mount. It's just a bit of plastic on this edge that snugly holds the guide pole in place. So we can just loosen these two screws and you can lift it out if you'd like but you may find that lifting the screws is enough to let you slide that pole out and we're actually going to slide it out through this little gap here. But before we pull that uh, slide pole out we need to well, it's probably better to actually mark where uh, the gears are attached and the actual unit itself is when you removed it. So there's the rail which holds the unit and then the gear you can see it is attached to there. So I'm just going to mark both, just the gear and the rail itself. So when we put it back together, basically it's going to be reattached to the exact same gears. And this is just a backup step, just in case the CD unit doesn't have a sensor of where the laser is, which it highly likely does, but it's better to be safe. 
Okay, and now we can slide that guide pole out for step six. And just push it from the bottom there and out of that little gap. And there we go. The pole comes out and our laser unit is in here. Now try not to touch the actual laser portion, the glass part. And slowly lift it through the top there, holding the sides. And also be careful of the rather thin ribbon cables that connect the laser to the little PCB next to it, the controller unit. And overnight parts from somewhere special. And we have a replacement laser unit. So we can see straight away that the replacement unit does not have the guide rail. So we'll need to replace that onto the new unit and then also the wires, obviously. So let's get to that. So we'll just start that transfer of the wires. And there's the first one. And it's much the same with the other connector. This one was a bit more stubborn. But it comes out eventually. So we'll just transfer that over. Alrighty, for step nine, we transfer the actual plastic rail. And it's just held in place with one Phillips head screw which is tiny, so make sure you use a smaller Phillips head. And we'll just try and hold that screw on there, not lose it, and then transfer it to the new unit, which is here. And just do the reverse and screw that back into place. And you want to do a little bit tight, but don't over tighten it. Okay, that's our new unit reassembled. And we'll just guide this in through the bottom of the drive. And what you're aiming to do is get the opposite guide, which is this little uh, metal knobbly bit. And it needs to go over and sit on top of that plastic there. Alrighty, so that lets it slide on the opposite end of where the pole is and the actual plastic rail connects to the gear. So we'll just let that sit in place and try and align it and grab our pole and slide it in this little edge here. So step 11, we will replace that guide pole just through that little gap and trying to find the mount hole there. And it takes a bit of jiggling. Sort of need to keep the laser unit straight as well. And there it goes through the actual guide hole. And just need to do the other one. And we make sure our gears are lined up there as well. So we can see the markings we did earlier. And that looks about right. Let's make sure it's not a gear over. And we can push our guide pole back through. Make sure it clicks in on the other end. And there you have it. That's perfectly aligned as we marked it. So for step 12, we simply replace the guide mount screws. And 
and try not to over tighten it because it is plastic underneath. That's the other one there. Alrighty, so that's the top part and we just flip the unit back over. And we simply replace the PCB. So we're just doing the initial steps in reverse order here. And we do the same for the side connector there. The green one clips in there. And flip the unit over and the third and final connector wire snaps in there. Alrighty, so we just want to guide these four pronged connectors into the sub motor PCB. And they should go fairly easy as long as you've got that aligned in it just slides down. And the final step is redoing all the screws. So we've got the PCB and then the top part of the CD tray to do. And that's pretty much it. So thanks heaps for watching guys. Catch us next time.